Welcome everyone and thank you for joining me for this Diecast Emporium video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Mix F of Matchbox Basic Cars from 2022. Now this case will have a lot of repeats, but they will also have a few new cars mixed in throughout the year. So let's not waste any more time and get it cracked open. While I'm doing this, a huge thanks to JCar Diecast for sending this case over for review. Let's get it cracked open. And as I always like to do, let's take a look from the top down first. Here you can see the assortment, what it looks like. Uh, appears that there is a couple doubles of things immediately off the bat that I can see. Interesting. All right, let's get straight to it, shall we? First out of the case, number, what number is this? It doesn't have a number on it. This is the 94 Lexus LS400 in kind of a gold finish. Normally there's a number underneath here. Uh, and there isn't on this one. Pretty nice looking car. Jeep Wrangler Superlift. Here's the numbers. Number 99 out of 100 for this one. And if you're new to my videos, after we get done with the unboxing out of the actual shipping box, I will open up most of these and we'll put them on the table so you can see them up close and personal. 60... Seven, no, 87 out of 100. The 1969 BMW 2002 in red. I believe we've seen that before. Oh, yeah. Nice. 97 of 100 Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40. Man, that looks good. Awesome that there's one of those in this case. Oh, here's another good one. Number 88 out of 100, the Subaru SVX. Boy, those wheels look good. Reference the wheels on the model to the wheels on the card, um, which are actually pretty realistic for what the real car had. That's pretty close. Kudos, Matchbox. Good job on this one. All right. 77 of 100, the Audi e-tron. Obviously an electrified vehicle from Audi in this kind of a sky or a bright baby blue color all right 2021 cadillac ct5 dash v i think this is supposed to be cts dash v but it's a five 72 out of 100 in red casting that's been around for a number of years speaking of something that's been around since the beginning of time it seems like now it's known as the plowmaster 600 this actually used to be a licensed snowplow truck uh, from gmc and chevrolet but this one is in the National Parks livery, so that'll be uh, that'll be obviously pretty popular with the National Parks people. Another 2021 Cadillac CT5 or CTSV, so that's a double of that one. All right, we have a Garbage King, number 74 of 100, a fantasy casting based on city garbage trucks, this time with a white cab and a blue body. I believe this is another repeat. 65 out of 100, the 2021 Most Mustang Mach-E. If you would have told me years ago that Ford would have produced a hybrid Mustang, I would have looked at you and told you you were crazy. But uh, a lot of things have happened recently that if you would have asked me about even a handful of years ago, I would have said you're absolutely crazy. It'll never happen. But here we are. All right, next up, 3 of 100, the McLaren 720 Spider Convertible. Boy, you want to talk about famous supercars. Just about everything McLaren has put out over the years is uh, is up there. This one in kind of a banana yellow color. Not totally sold on the color, but McLaren in the real world, a lot, most of their vehicles are painted in very eye-catching, uh, vibrant colors. 85 of 100, the MBX Armored Truck, another fantasy casting, which is not licensed, but it's based on um, armored cars. Okay, next up we have two... Two of these. They are the Volkswagen EV4, which is Volkswagen's electric hybrid crossover vehicle in a really dark blue pearlescent paint. Looks kind of decent. Again, we'll take a closer look at it when we open it. Here's another favorite among collectors, the 1932 Ford Coupe Model B, number 66 out of 100, this time in blue. Check out that ride, huh? All right. Looks like we got a police car. Number 86 of 100, Dodge Charger Pursuit. What is that livery? NASA. NASA Security Patrol. Okay, interesting. 
All right, uh, Citron AMI. Don't know a whole lot about this car, um, other than I can tell you that Citroen is French, and they specialize in uh, in these type of vehicles. There you go. It is a licensed casting. You'll never see one of those here in the States, more than likely. Tesla Model X in white. There you go. Didn't they release one of these in blue earlier the year? Maybe I'm thinking of something else. All right, another manufacturer that you would be hard-pressed to find here in the States, the Renault Kango, number 30 of 100. Uh, Renault, obviously, a very famous French constructor, manufacturer. They uh, won several world constructors' titles in Formula 1 with their race team. 1962 Volkswagen Beetle, number 93 of 100, in this kind of green finish to it. Not totally sold on the paint job. It doesn't look that realistic. Okay, a few more left in the case. 1971 MGB GT Coupe, or Coupe, in uh, this very non-appealing yellow color. Do love those wheels, though. Again, MG, a uh, company out of the UK, Britain, I believe, specifically. All right, 89 of 100. Another casting that I actually like, even though it is a non-licensed casting. We have the express delivery. Basically, this is modeled after your FedEx, your UPS, your Amazon delivery trucks. For it not being licensed, I think they did a pretty good job. This one is in the Cargo Couriers, which is another one of the recurring livery themes that you'll find in Matchbox throughout the years. So another one to add to your Cargo collection. And last, out of this case, the F-Case Mix 6 for 2022. 2019 Mazda 3, number 80 of 100. There you go. That is the case breakdown. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to open up these and put them on the spin table. Welcome back, everybody. Let's go ahead and get straight into it. We've got the spin table out. Move it and adjust it into frame here. All right, first up, 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E. Coming out swinging in this case. So this is the, the hybrid Ford Mustang. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I No, doesn't work for me. If you're going to do a Mustang, make it iconic to the Mustang brand and name. Make it a performance car. Make it a muscle car. I know that we as a culture and we as individuals are trying to become as, eco, as uh, eco-friendly as we possibly can. But there are those of us out there, pretty much my generation and older, that like performance. We like naturally aspirated engines, gas-powered engines. Not this crap, especially not on a muscle car. That said, if you are younger and you are of those generations that are all... Uh, as environmentally friendly as possible, and you could care less if your car sounds like a Mustang, as long as you're helping out the environment, then this is a car for you. As for the casting, we have the Mustang logo on the grill, your headlights, your clear top, uh, which is actually painted black. It's not clear, but the windows are clear. And on the back, you have your taillights, the Mustang logo, and where the license plate cover is, it says Mustang Mach-E. All right, next up. We have the Tesla Model X, so basically the Tesla version of this car. Put them kind of side by side. You can see they actually look very, very similar. Let that rotate around once. Tesla has a plate on the back, taillights, headlights. The clear window insert actually looks halfway decent. I believe we've seen this before. I thought we saw this in blue earlier this year. I could be mistaken. I don't know. I don't, as you have blatantly found out in this video, I could really care less for this type of car. But I know that this is something that not only the uh, general public is pushing to see more of, but Matchbox is hugely involved with um, eco-friendly cars, uh, even making you know their, their card that your car comes on recyclable, all kinds of fun stuff. All right, next up, Garbage King. The Matchbox Garbage Truck. Again, not something that's licensed, but it is inspired heavily by uh, by real-life garbage trucks. This one reads, PNW for Pacific Northwest Sanitation. Eh, I don't know what else to say about it, other than they actually did a pretty decent job with the decals on here. Here's your large trash compactor in the rear. You have white alternating stripes for your DOT striping. Orange lights all throughout. Obviously, the company name. 
and then your very generic Matchbox cab over that they use for a variety of their different trucks. For those customizers among us, this would be a good starting point for maybe putting a Bowley cab or a Walther Seamaster cab, changing out your wheels and tires, and adding some add-on detail pieces. Because for all intents and purposes, honestly, the garbage box on these on these trucks are, are pretty decent. All right, next up, we have the Express Delivery. I touched on this briefly during the unboxing. I said this is one of my favorite fantasy castings in that it is very realistic to the Amazon delivery trucks that you'll see, UPS, FedEx, DHL, all around town where you live. In keeping with time-honored fashion with Matchbox, this is in the Cargo Couriers Livery. Again, a lot of their delivery trucks, uh, box vans, etc., etc., over the years have featured Cargo on it. Um, and then you have your white top that you can see right down into it, which is kind of nice. And then a fleet number right over here, as well as your side lights, but no headlights. They're just cut out inside the plastic casting via some holes. Next up, 1971 MGB GT Coupe, or Coupe. In this, uh, this rather unattractive yellow color, in my opinion. But, again, as with most cars and manufacturers, I touched on this during my last case unboxing video, there is a huge following for vehicles like this. There is the M, uh, the MGT Vehicle Owners Club. I believe they do a lot of things for charity as well. They have a once-a-year get-together. And the cars are just, they're petite, they're small. Uh, it really gives you the feel that you got a lot of performance underneath your right foot, so... For those of us that like that, like me, um, MGs are, are interesting cars. There's your decals on the back, including a European-style white license plate. And the wheels that they used on here, I think, look pretty good and are true to form for the real version of this car. All right, next up, Renault Kango, number 30 of 100. This is in a shell livery, unit 125, it says as well. So while you're likely not going to see any Renault vehicles here in the United States, or if you do, they're imported, very expensive, and privately owned, um, this is a livery I would have liked to have seen maybe on the Ford Transit van, for example, something that you would absolutely see here in the United States. Casting is pretty generic. There's no headlights. There's no decal for the Renault logo on front. Um, basically, the detailing and decaling that it got was the shell... Um, logo, which is actually, you know, a seashell, and then the yellow and white and red striping that you can find at the bottom. This will go well, though, with the shell Ford C-Series truck that came out the case before this, um, so you can have your little shell fleet going on. All right, Plowmaster 6000. I hesitate to say that this is a fantasy casting Matchbox original because it isn't, for those of us otherwise inclined, back when the world used to be a little bit more civilized, the plow was removable, and you could articulate it left to right. Now it is just stationary. Uh, you cannot take it out. And then the grill, they have omitted the Chevy and GMC decal. But you can obviously tell those of us that are a little bit older and have seen these real trucks around that it still retains that classic cab and grill of the old GMCs and of the old Chevy uh, series. The salts around the back is casted in, as is the plastic top. You have a light rotating beacon, which with the help of maybe a clear orange decaling pen, you can bring that out to life. You have your headlights mounted on top of your uh, snow plow as well. And it is in the National Parks livery, which for no other reason will make this a very, very popular um, collector's item for the adult collectors in the Matchbox community. And lastly, it does come with a trailer hitch as well, so if you wanted to pull a small utility trailer behind this, you could do that as well. All right, next up, we have a Cadillac CTS-V, and I believe there are two of these in the case, if I remember correctly. It was only about 10 minutes ago, but, you know, short-term memory loss is a thing. So this is your CTS or CT5V. Again, digging back into what I remember about the real car, I believe this had some mechanical components of the Corvette, up to and including the Corvette engine that you can get in this. Um, but instead of having a all-out, tough, brawl, performance uh, muscle car, this was a little bit more laid back, a little bit more comfy in size, uh, inside, I should say, 
And obviously, if you're driving around in a Cadillac, there there is that mantra that, you know, you're driving around in American luxury, which, uh, take it or leave it, it is what it is. Okay, next up, 88 out of 100, the Subaru SVX. Another fantastic little sleeper performance car, uh, Japanese performance car from the 1990s, early 1990s. This one we have seen before in other colors, but this probably is my absolute favorite so far with the the gold style wheels, which can be found on most of the famous World Rally cars that Subaru had over the years, uh, and even on some of their performance street products as well. Uh, the, the interior is not done. It's kind of hard to see through the windshield, but if you peek inside, you will notice that the steering wheel is on the left-hand side. Just a, a pretty cool car overall. Uh, a lot of things I can say about it, but I'm a big fan of this casting, and I hope that they continue to make it. And this black, almost this charcoal black finish, looks really good. License plate holder at the back does read Subaru SVX, and you can see the red taillights section here too. Okay, Volkswagen Beetle 1962 edition. For the Beetle fans of the world... The first generation Volkswagen Beetle, this style design. Uh, you may or may not know this, but I'm um, going to give you a little bit of a history lesson. The Volkswagen Beetle was conceived and developed as the people's car by Adolf Hitler. Um, they intended to have a car that everybody could afford, and it's one of the vehicles that helped the German uh, war effort, the funding for the German war effort in World War II. Unfortunately, most of the people that put a pre-order in for the real one would obviously never get the opportunity to drive their real car after the war. But a lot of you watching, especially my younger viewers, which in uh, in our education system now in America, they tend to change up the facts, particularly when it comes to history. Um, going to give you a little straight dope on this one. And uh, its designer, its idea, and why the car was made. As you may expect, the... Uh, engine for this vehicle is actually rear mounted and the front is quote unquote the trunk so very iconic to the beetle license plate your tail lights this also does have a plastic hitch on the back for hitch and toes so you can maybe pull your camper or caravan behind this one and I, I do like the color it's unusual in that we don't often get this kind of teal or green color for almost a forestry green color but uh, i think it accentuates the model well especially with the white hubs next up Going electric once again, the Audi e-tron. Crossover SUV in a very bright and vibrant blue shade. I would call it a sky blue uh, or a baby blue. Uh, you do have your Audi rings, which is the Audi logo at the back. Your taillights, and I believe this does have headlights on it as well as it spins back around. Your overall design and sculpture of the car captures the iconic one, the real one, very well particularly that Audi front grille, which they did a fantastic job with getting that deck coat on. Left-hand drive vehicle, you can make out the interior in this. And they even have the spot right here for where your antenna would go. Obviously, they couldn't have that as a choking hazard on the Matchbox version. But at least they made a little bit of an indentation in the casting as to where it would be found. Back to Volkswagen momentarily. Here we have another blue car, the EV4, VW EV4. Again, another... EV electric vehicle. Getting a the theme here. Personally, I think Matchbox is overdoing it. But that is the future. Like it or not, it's here. And it will be here. So there you go. Uh, dark blue color, Volkswagen logo, taillights. Um, I do like the black piece here. It almost has uh, like a carbon fiber look and finish to it. Might be hard to pick up on camera, but they executed that well. Um, your headlights and your Volkswagen logo can be found along with your lower grill, uh, lower grill portion here. So, there you go. That's that one. All right. 1994 Lexus LS 400. So, my grandfather actually had one of these. And, uh, I always liked it. And the one thing I remember being a, a real youngster is I was fascinated because this car, as it refuses to come out of the packaging, there we go, this car was the first car I ever saw with a corded phone in the center council. And I just thought, as, as a youngster, that was the coolest thing. So when I found out Matchbox was doing this car, I knew I absolutely had to have a sample of it. So thrilled that we have one here to show you. Taillights, 
headlights, you know the drill by now. Left-hand drive, detailed interior, the Lexus logo, um, sunroof. And you may think that this color is pretty ugly, but this actually was a color that's very close to an option they would have offered back in the early 1990s. And this, Lexus has and always, Lexus is and always has been Toyota's luxury brand. So it's nice to have a, uh, a sample of something for the 90s kids like myself. Okay, 1990, or 2019 Mazda 3. It's in a, uh, in a gray paint scheme. Decal headlights, decal Mazda logo. Another left-hand drive vehicle. Four-door on this one. They even, in the casting, they even have the gas cap, which is really cool. Obviously, your taillights, your rear diffuser area, um, and then the Mazda logo on it as well. Interesting-looking car, especially for those that are into hot hatches or hatchback cars. There's a little bit of something for everyone in this mix. Speaking of something for everyone, here we have the Citroen AMI, or AMI, another EV vehicle. Now, I don't know. I probably should have done the research. But I believe I read somewhere that they were going to make this autonomous, or it, maybe it is autonomous, meaning that it can drive without an actual human. I don't know the full details on it. Honestly, I don't care that much. But I do believe I read somewhere in Road and Track or something that uh, this vehicle does have that capability on it. So there's a model of it. Very boxy looking, very plain, boring. Um, and I guess the color doesn't really help that out. But the Citroen logo does pop out well on this car. All right, we got about a half dozen left to go. Dodge Charger Pursuit, number 86 of 100. Police cars have always been a hot seller for Matchbox. In fact, there are people that just collect Hot Wheels Matchbox police cars, or excuse me, Hot Wheels and Matchbox police cars. I happen to know one of them, one of my really good friends, and uh, he loves, any time that I tell him the Matchbox is coming out with a police car, doesn't matter what it is, he's like, let me know as soon as it's out, I want to go get one. Now, this does have your push bar or your pit maneuver bar. Pursuit intervention technique is what pit stands for. Um, you don't typically see that too much nowadays because it poses a significant risk to the general population. So the police will only use it when they know for a fact that uh, they can disable the vehicle and stop the vehicle without it destroying people and or property. NASA Space Patrol on this one. Again, not totally sold on this choice of livery, but I guess it's something for everybody. And then the light bar, I touched on this in my last video. I cannot stand the light bars that Matchbox uses, or really lack thereof, I should say. Back in the day, the light bar pieces were a separate casted piece, uh, meaning they weren't part of the windshield, and they were always an authentic color, like a clear red, a clear blue, uh, or a clear orange. I really wish they would just go back to that. I, I understand why they're not. Again, it's a piece that could potentially pop off and choke a kid to death. But for those of us that are adult collectors... Chances are we're not going to kill ourselves on Matchbox cars. Stepping on your nephew's Legos, though, you may very well end up killing yourself. All right, 1969 BMW 2002 in red. We've seen this car before. Again, I believe it was in yellow. Then we saw it in blue and white and all kinds of generic colors. Now we have it in red. Overall, I think it's a nice two-door sports car. It really, if you're a fan of vintage German smaller cars, compact cars... That's the word I was looking for, compact. Um, this is a good one. And a lot of people get thrown off because it has 2002 in the name. And it looks like, honestly, it could have been designed in 2002. But, of course, the model year for this 1969. Again, BMW way ahead of the curve in terms of um, car sculpture and design. Now, another thing I want to tell you that you'll probably only find on my channel. The BMW logo, the Beamer logo. Can any of you tell me what it is inspired by? Well, actually, it's inspired by a planes spinning propeller. There you go. Something you can win a bar bet at if you didn't already know that. All right, Jeep Wrangler Superlift, number 99 of 100. Again, getting close to a half hour. I know, I talk too much. But I really like to give a personal connection and a little bit of background information on all of these vehicles. Not just take them out, open them up, and comment and say, Oh, this one has taillights, this one has headlights, whatever. You guys have seen that in other presenters' videos of Matchbox and Hot Wheels cars. I want to separate myself by kind of giving you knowledge about the real thing. So if you are a car guy and a die-cast guy, chances are you like the real vehicles too. 
So this is a super lift Jeep. You have your snorkel over here. Um, kinds of like bags and carry-ons and stuff like that that you would need. Mine has like a, a paint blotch there on top, but that's all right. Matchbox Adventures on the door. Matchbox Adventures World Tour to be exact. This one has a rear-mounted winch, recovery winch, as well as a front protection bar. Uh, and I believe there's a winch on that one too, is there not? No, it's just a, it's just a bar. And no headlights. You can probably paint them on with a silver or chrome paint pen, but would have nice to have seen them on there anyway. All right, MBX Armor Truck. Thinking about past glory days, Matchbox did have an international armored truck for a number of years, even recently. I believe this has kind of replaced that, um, which I'm not a big fan of. Obviously, I would much rather have a licensed tooling than an unlicensed Matchbox original. That said, um, it is mostly plastic. The body is anyway. It says CST, which stands for Continental Security Transport. It also has armed written out, which is a bit surprising that Matchbox would put that on one of their vehicles, but kudos to them for doing so. Obviously, there are basically two different types of security guards. You have your armed security, which carry weapons, guns, and then your unarmed security. So you actually have to go through different training and accreditation um, processes for what you want to be. You just don't sign up to be a security officer. Um, they ask you, literally, is, do you want to be armed or do you want to be unarmed security? Because they serve two very distinct purposes and two very different purposes. All right, two more to get through here. 1932 Ford Coupe Model B. Classic Roadster from the 30s. This has a larger rear wheel and a smaller front wheel that is reminiscent of the drag cars, even of today. Uh, the funny cars especially have that configuration. Larger tires in the rear, smaller tires up front. This hit, this was released, I believe, last year in the Moon Eyes livery, so it's nice to finally get one that's just blue, plain, and that iconic front Ford. Your iconic grille and your forward-facing headlights just make this casting absolutely incredible. All right, guys, we've got one more to do, and that is number 97 and 100, the Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40. In a... It doesn't tell you what it is, but if I had to guess, I would say this is paying homage to the vintage Toyota um, racing livery that you would have found in, like, the Baja 1000 race in the 1980s and early 1990s. It has the similar coloring and stripes on it. White top. Mine has uh, seen better days. Looks like it was bounced around a little bit at the factory. And uh, you have the front bumper. Your lifting eyes and bolt down points up on the front. I just enjoy this casting a lot, even though it wants to take off and uh, end this video soon. But, huge favorite. I think this will be probably the one that goes off the pegs the fastest. So, there you go. That'll do it. Thank you all so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a comment in the comment section down below. And again, huge thanks to James and the crew over at J Car Diecast for providing a couple cases for me to do review videos on. Thanks, guys. Until next time, take care, be well. I'll see you soon.